and we are live. Hello, good afternoon. I am absolutely delighted to join you on this very sunny, balmy, warm <laughs> uh, April day. I actually thought it was March <laughs> up until a few minutes ago and realized it was actually April, which is very scary. Hi to everyone who has joined so far. Um, and all of you who have left comments and said, yes, uh, John, Terry, Richard, Robert, David, Eves, uh, Andre, thank you so much. I have to just start my um, stream by saying thank you to everyone who has sent me an email over the last couple of days and, um, and just either communicated how much you're enjoying the streams or have, you know, made suggestions for other ideas or, you know, little, or said, you missed this thing. <laughs> So thank you so much for all your feedback. It really does mean the world to me and also the team because I forward all of your emails um, to, to everybody. Hello, Ian and uh, other John. Um, so today I'm really excited because we're going to be talking about time lapse video and uh, interval timer shooting, which is actually quite a fun topic. Before I start that, I want you to notice the, um, the little ice cream sundae. I actually am trying to work out whether it's on this side or this side, but that on one or the other side, corner of the screen, there is a little glass. And every time you do a super chat donation, the glass will fill up. And the idea is that we want to fill it to the top by the end of the stream. I don't know what that involves. I don't know how many coffee donations you have to make to fill it up. But anyway, yes, I am Superman today. <laughs> I'm embracing my inner superhero um, with a with a touch of Grays of Westminster smartness. But um, but mainly I am just Superman. So there we go. Hello uh, to Valeria from Italy and Peter and Paul and Steve. Well done. And Baiko, Igor. There we go. And uh, goodness me, from all over the place. So interval timer shooting and time lapse shooting. What are those things? You've probably heard people talk about them. Um, maybe you've seen some fantastic uh, time lapse videos on social media. D John is saying that it's on my right. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm guessing that it is my right. So it's over here. The Sunday. So for those of you who are just joining us, the little ice cream glass will fill up every time you do a super chat donation. Ian, there you go. So hopefully it will. We're just going to do a little experiment here, but it should fill up as we go along. In fact, let me uh, switch my screen so that I can see what it's doing. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, so the idea is that when you do that, there we go. It comes along. And uh, it just shows you, bloop, 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 the little balls fall in. Right, enough about that. <laughs> That's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk to you about interval timer shooting. So there are two options on most DSLR cameras. Um, the one that we come have become accustomed to seeing is interval timer shooting. That has actually been available on DSLRs for a very, very long time. Um, but a little bit more recently, uh, Nikon started putting time-lapse video as a feature in their cameras. I remember that the D750 and I believe the D4S had it, um, and I know that the Zs have it and the D850. You may, if you've got an older camera, you can check, but I think it, we're looking at the last sort of five years worth of bodies had this uh, time-lapse video in it. So first I'm going to talk about interval timer shooting because that's something that you'll all have on your cameras. Um, time lapse and interval timer shooting essentially serve the same purpose. Yay, Jack, thank you. <laughs> I get so easily distracted by the little pang of, uh, of funds going into the account. The uh, coffee donation fund is filling up nicely. Thank you for that. So when you're doing interval timer shooting, you then have to take those photos and put them together into a video if you want a time lapse movie. Uh, that's a slightly more complicated thing. So hence, Nick on putting in time lapse video as an option all on its own is very, very helpful if you aren't doing sort of extreme time lapse recording. Um, oh, another one, David, amazing. I hope this little cup is filling up as we go along. Yes, look at it. It's just going and going. I hope you can see that. It might need refreshing, but it's filling up on my side. So there it goes. I can see it. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is brilliant. I wonder what it's going to overflow by the end, hopefully. Um, right. So first, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you on the Z because I've got the 500 mil stuck to the D850, and um, that's a little bit cumbersome to hold up to the camera. Uh, so 
On the D850 and the Z6 and Z7, the um, time-lapse video is in a slightly different place to each other. So first we're going to look at interval timer shooting. Now you will find interval timer shooting in the menu that I've talked a lot about recently, the photo shooting menu. Um, and it is the option just above the yellow band there, interval timer shooting, you'll see it's quite close to the bottom of the menu. And when you go into that, you can set up the camera to shoot at intervals. You can shoot, the longest interval you can have is 24 hours. Um, now, the shortest interval is about a second. Uh, in fact, I think it's exactly a second. I don't think you can do fractions of a second, but so you could shoot a shot every second um, up to 89,991 shots. On older cameras, it is worth knowing um, that the limit on the number of shots you could take was about 999. So they've added another 10, uh, another thousand shots. It's actually a thousand shots in an extra interval that they've added to the newer cameras, which is a bit confusing. But essentially, the, the highest number of shots you can take on an interval uh, time of shooting setup is 89,991 shots. Goodness me, what are we going to do with that number of shots? That is so many shots. And the longest period that you can delay the shot until is 24 hours. So you can only take, the, the longest you can take is 24 hours, one shot every 24 hours for 89,991 shots. So if you wanted to, with an older camera, do something insanely extreme like that, you would need a remote cable release. And the remote cable release for that job is called the MC36. What the MC36 does is allows you to take um, the same number of shots that the cameras can now take inherently, but with the older cameras, you couldn't. Um, so if you wanted to take 9,999 shots in nine intervals, <laughs> <laughs> the maths is like, I need a whiteboard to d demonstrate this. But if you wanted to do that, um, then you would have to have used the MC36 cable release. So if you do have an older camera, um, like a D700 or a D2 series or a D100, any of those, you are going to need an additional... Um, oh, goodness me, another... Look at, the, look at the balls, they're falling out now. They shouldn't fall out, stay in. <laughs> Thank you to Michael for your coffee fund donation. Thank you very, very much. Um, so if you want to do that with an older camera, you would need an MC36 only if you need that many shots. To be honest, for the kind of thing that we're talking about today, you probably wouldn't need that many shots. It's only if you were... I've had a few people who, for example, they set their camera up on a rig and they're um, doing interval timer shots of the progress of a building being put up or um, of a, an event being set up. Or, you know, you could do the flowers in spring coming out, that kind of thing. You might need more shots if you are planning to do interval timer shooting over a long period of time. If you're a professional photographer, videographer, you would also more than likely use the interval timer shooting as opposed to time-lapse movie which is what the camera does for you, which is a completely separate thing that I'm going to talk about in a moment. And what um, it's something that I had a lot of fun with over the last couple of days um, setting up. So the um, interval timer will, as I say, allow you to shoot up to 89,991 shots in total. Um, the longest gap between shots you can take is 24 hours. So that's that obviously the quality of the picture that you shoot is down to the settings of the camera so if you're shooting raw then that's what you would set some of the menu options in the interval timer shooting menu option and sorry it doesn't roll off the tongue so it sounds a bit like a tongue twister but the number the the menu options in the interval timer shooting are quite similar to that of the time lapse movie shooting option so i'm going to just talk about that one next um but first i must acknowledge richard for your fantastic uh, coffee fund donation which i think last we checked conversion rate is about 13 british pounds so that's enough for uh, a coffee a croissant and a hot cross bun <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much. London coffee is very expensive. <laughs> um, so, all right. So that's interval timer shooting. And that's I'm not going to cover that in any more kind of great detail because a lot of it overlaps with the time lapse movie shooting, uh, which is really what most of us will probably be doing. Um, those of you who have been taking my 
the, the little bits of knowledge I try and share during the streams and then going out and doing them and sending me photos and stuff. I hope you have a lot of fun with this because it is um, it is highly entertaining to both get it wrong and very rewarding to get it right. <laughs> so the menu option that we're going to talk about on the Z6 and Z7, it is in the same menu. It is in the photo shooting menu. It's right below interval timer shooting and it's called time lapse movie. On the D850, you will find that in the movie settings, which is a completely different menu. It's underneath the photo shooting menu and you'll find it at the bottom there. I don't know why they put it in a different place on the D850 versus the Z cameras, but eh, I, uh, fine. We know where it is on the D850. So in the D850, you wanna go to the movie settings. In the Z6, Z7, you wanna go to the photo shooting menu just below the interval time of shooting. I've just had my screen ping up again. Goodness me, thank you, Andre, thank you, Terry. Amazing, this is, I am gonna thoroughly enjoy my coffee <laughs> after this. Thank you very, very much. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go through that menu very quickly, and then I'm gonna show you some results and some examples. Um, I noticed that Eves, who is joining us this afternoon, actually posted on Instagram um, a time-lapse video that he did using these settings. And I said to him, I said, you beat me to it. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm about to do a stream on this. So anyway, I'm gonna show you that in a minute as well. But essentially when you go into the time-lapse movie settings, which you can't see because it's yellow, but that's the one I'm going into, the top option says start. The second option, much like your um, interval timer shooting menu, gives you the uh, interval. So how frequently do you want the camera to take pictures? Now, just to, because I have to get quite in depth on this, that it makes a big difference. Your interval makes a massive difference to how your time-lapse movie is gonna look. Um, if you do fewer shots over a longer interval, um, then you're gonna end up with a shorter video. So essentially, the, the highest number of shots you can possibly take over the longest period of time is what's gonna give you the longer video. If you take, for example, a shot every second, um, and then you set the camera so that it takes those shots over the space of 10 minutes, obviously you're gonna get a longer video than if you took a shot every three seconds or every five seconds over the same period of time. So when you set this up, you do have to do a little bit of mental arithmetic. The good thing is that the cameras actually tell you how long your time-lapse movie is gonna be. So when you go into it and you choose your interval, so for example, on this in this instance here, I've got an interval of two seconds shooting over 20 minutes. See that? So two seconds is the top one, 20 seconds, sorry, 20 minutes is the next one down. And at the bottom, just over here in blue, it actually tells me that my time-lapse video is gonna be 10.1 seconds long with those settings. Now, if I change it and I go up and I take, a, let's say I decided to shoot every uh, do, do, 10 seconds over a period of 20 minutes, then my video, my time-lapse video, is only gonna be one second long. And I have to tell you, that's a lot of work for only one second of video. So you wanna make sure that you have a happy kind of medium between the number of shots you're taking and the length of time that the camera is gonna take your video for. Um, what the camera does is compile it afterwards. So it takes all those shots and as it takes them, it compiles it into a video for you. If you excuse me, if you do interrupt the recording, um, it will still create a video based on whatever it managed to record up until that point. So let's say you set it up on a tripod and you had the camera running for half an hour and you came back after 15 minutes and you turned it off, you would still have a video from those first um, 15 minutes, which is great. Um, that's okay, Sam, thank you for joining us. It's okay that you're a little late. We're talking about time-lapse video. Um, so you can always, anyone who comes in late, you can always recap um, after the, the stream has finished, but, um, but we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty of it now. So in your time-lapse video um, movie option, you wanna select your interval. Now the other thing to bear in mind with the interval and the shooting time is what kind of subject you're shooting. If you are shooting a subject that doesn't change very much uh, from one second to the next, then shooting a shot, uh, taking a shot every one second for a period of 10, 20, 30 minutes, etc is gonna be a very boring time-lapse video. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some boring examples in just a minute. Um, but if you have a subject that changes rapidly, then doing more shots, as many shots as you can over that period is much better. 
if you were doing, for example, I've seen examples where Nikon set up their cameras to show you time-lapse video when they're preparing a stand for the photography show. And they put the camera on a tripod and then they set it up to take a different picture every five minutes because the stage doesn't change that much in the period of five minutes. Um, and then you get all these people whizzing around and you get the stage sort of being put, put up and built and stuff and it's, and it's quite a good video. If they were to change those settings and take a shot every one second, not only would the time lapse be really long because they're doing it over the period of let's say five or six hours, but also it wouldn't be that interesting because not that much changes between one second and five minutes. Um, if you have something like flowers, now this was quite an interesting experimentation for me because some flowers respond much faster than others to sunlight and to water um, and also just to environmental um, sort of factors is the word I'm looking for, environmental factors. So different plants react differently. Um, so sometimes you set a three or a five second interval and the plant has changed dramatically in those five seconds. So then you're video will look quite jerky. Um, now with the, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about the battery in just a second, John. Um, so with something like dandelions, those close up quite fast at the end of the day. So I did some shots every kind of two seconds, three seconds. I experimented a bit and I'm going to show you the results of that um, just so that you can see what it looks like, both doing it incorrectly and somewhat correctly. Um, I'll show you that in just a minute. Just to answer um, John, on the Z series, you can hot swap the batteries if you've got the grip. But if you are doing a long period of time with a D850, if your battery runs out, unfortunately you have to restart the, um, the time lapse. So there are solutions for that, which I will talk about. Um, they're in my notes <laughs> so that I don't forget to talk about them. But essentially what you would need to do if you are shooting over a really long period of time is to get an AC adapter. And Nikon's AC adapters require two parts to do that, which I'll talk about in a minute. Just to give you an idea, I shot about three hours, not all together, but in bits and pieces on a single charge of an e Eneal 15B. With the Z6, it was about two hours. With the D850, it was about three hours. And that was cumulative because I did 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes, an hour. Like I did a few experiments. And because I don't have an AC adapter here in my home and they're all in the shop, I had to just live with charging my batteries regularly and doing shorter time-lapse videos. Um, so you can, with a single charge battery, do quite a lot. If you've got an older style battery, I did have one here, but I think I took it downstairs. If you've got an older e 15, like a black one, for example, from the earlier cameras, it might not last quite as long. The D850 and uh, Z batteries are quite fresh and new, so they didn't run out that quickly. So that's to answer you on the battery question, but I will come back to that later. So just going back into our menu, so you've got your interval, your shooting time. Now, the options below are quite important once I get the menu back up. <laughs> there we go. So the, one at the, the, the two options at the bottom there are exposure smoothing, which I recommend you keep on. Essentially, what exposure smoothing does is it makes sure that the transition between one shot to the next is, is better blended than if the camera just stuck with the settings you used. Um, by doing that, it adjusts the ISO, actually. It just... I mean, it slightly adjusts it. So even if you've got the camera set to manual, the camera will only gradually change the exposure settings um, between one shot and the next so that you get a much smoother transition between um, if, if your light source changes a lot, for example. So I would recommend having exposure smoothing on. I would also recommend if you've got it in your camera, having silent photography on, which is the next option down. Essentially what that does um, doesn't exist for some... I don't think they've got it in the D750, D600 series, none of those cameras. But the um, the D850 and Z certainly have it, and I believe the D500 as well. Uh, you can tell the camera not to actually open and close the shutter and slap the mirror up and down. Um, no mirror, obviously, in the Z cameras, but the mirror in the D850. So silent photography is recommended because it will reduce the amount of vibrations in the body while you're taking your time lapse. Um, stillness when you're doing this is key. So a tripod or a very, very stable surface is recommended and as little vibration as possible also recommended. If you've got VR in your lenses, turn it off um, on a DSLR, you won't need it. On the Z cameras, the Zs take it into account. They're very clever that way. So 
The next option on both the D850 and the Zs is to choose your image area. Now, um, just to show you that choose image area is exactly the same option as it is in the normal sh shooting menu, which means you can choose between FX and DX, a crop factor essentially. So if you, you can't choose between the sort of middle of the road uh, crop factors, but if you did want a cropped video, so you wanted a smaller area of the frame, you could do that in camera. I tend to shoot video and then just crop it in post-processing. Um, even the most basic movie um, editing software will allow you to crop an image if you want to. But if you need to, you can, you can put the DX crop on. Um, the next one is an important one, and I need to talk about this a little bit more in depth. So the next one is frame size slash frame rate. Now, I am not um, a resident expert on the subject of movie, but if you are in a European um, or if you're in England or in a European region, then the output of most of our computer screens and televisions and everything run at a frame rate of 25 frames per second. So when you look at these movie recording options, if you're in Europe or um, or in the UK, then you want to make sure that whenever you record a video, it's always set to 25p, or if you want slow-mo, then to 50p. So it's those two increments of 25. Um, the 24, 30, and 60 frame rates are all for other regions. So if you're in the US or Canada, then you would usually shoot at 30p um, and 60p, respectively. If you are shooting and then outputting it onto an old school TV, then you would use 24p, which is quite specialist and niche. So we are going to ignore that because there is no situation in which we would need that. But so for people doing time lapse video in the UK, shoot 25 or 50p just for any video, not just for time lapse, but just for video in generally in general. Um, if you're in the US or Canada, um, then you would shoot 30 and 60 increments. It's just the way that our screens um, output video information. So you would say, I because I quite like the idea of being able to stretch out some of the pictures, I generally shot at 50p. I think on one camera, I actually shot at 60p by accident because I hadn't noticed that I hadn't changed it. Um, so you will see a slightly draggy image on, on the video that I'm going to show you. And that is what happens when you shoot at the wrong frame rate. So that's why I'm talking about it. Um, an important thing to note on shutter speeds when you are shooting video just in general um, is that you tend to stick to the increments of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 25 or 50p, then your shutter speed also stays in increments of 50 or 100. You don't then use in between shutter speeds. Whereas if you were shooting uh, with 30 or 60p, which is the frame rate for the US and Canada and possibly some other regions, then you would stick to increments of 30s and 60s. So your shutter speeds would stay at 30th of a second, 60th of a second, 120th of a second, and so on. So just to make sure that you understand that. That has to do not with just the video output, but also the light refresh rate. I have a video which I shot where the shutter speed was um, too fast for the lights in the room that I was in. And you end up with this kind of banding on a video. And that's what you get when your shutter speed is too fast. Um, so if you ever see that when you're taking video, um, it's just your shutter speed. You will usually with the D850 and with the D500, you'll get a, like a flicker uh, warning in your viewfinder. And the flicker warning means your shutter speed is gonna end up with banding across your pictures. So it's probably something I can cover um, when we're not talking about time-lapse video, but that gives you an idea of what uh, sort of settings to use. So that's your frame rate. Obviously, some cameras shoot full 4K, some shoot, yes, thank you, woo, Fatini, for the, um, the, the <laughs> for the coffee fund donation. Um, yes, don't forget, you are welcome to continue to add to the coffee fund. I can see that my little, um, my little glass here is getting nice and full now. I'd like it to be overflowing by the time we finish talking. Um, right, so when you set your, um, what your quality, you've also got things like shooting 4K, shooting full HD, and then lower resolutions. Most of the time, we don't want to shoot lower resolution these days. We're a little bit spoilt for um, choice when it comes to resolution on video. So 1080p is recommended. That's high definition. If you are going to look at your time lapse uh, videos on a 4K television, then shoot in 4K by all means. But for things like YouTube, 
um, and Instagram and Facebook and things like that, 1080p is more than enough. You can always shoot at a higher frame rate and obviously then your editing software can compress it down for you. So if you want to shoot higher, you can. The last menu option is a little bit tricky to understand. So the last menu option here says interval priority. What does interval priority mean, Becky? Well, what that means is that you can tell the camera to prioritize the intervals. So you tell the camera, no matter what, I want you to take a picture every three seconds, regardless of whether the thing is in focus or the exposure has been corrected or whatever. I just want you to take the shot every three seconds. So when you've got on selected, so if you give it um, the interval priority, so the camera has to take a picture every three seconds, you do need to set your camera to program or aperture priority so that the camera can take over the settings and just make sure that, it, that the settings will always allow it to take that shot every three seconds. I tend to turn this off because I'm not desperate to have an exact number of exposures for my interval, um, but it does sometimes mean that you know, you end up at the end of the frame, for example, I was shooting some dandelions, it was getting quite dark, I had interval priority turned off. So I had this steady stream of photos. And then suddenly when it got dark, I had a big gap because the camera was trying to readjust for the settings and the shutter speed so that it could, um, could, could take that into account. So you end up with this sort of nice and smooth video of a dandelion moving and then suddenly oop, there was a little jerk at the end. So if I had chosen interval priority, then what would have happened was I'd have to have had it set onto program so that the camera could quickly overtake the settings, bump up the ISO, etc., so that I could get a smooth video. Um, now also, with the interval priority, if you are, let me just pull it back up again. If you've got interval priority turned on, you will also probably want to, uh, no, it is correct. <laughs> so I'm just looking at Jason's comment. It, it is, there's a, you can, I can send, put the link afterwards. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to get into an in-depth discussion on it. It's two different things between output of video and also um, shutter speeds. But yes, frame per second does have to do with the region that the output of the video is going to be looked at. Um, right, so on interval priority, you would ideally want to, if you're going to shoot in manual, um, then just have it off and have your manual settings and live with the consequences of whatever the video is going to look like. If you've got um, interval priority on, then set your camera to automatic or aperture priority and auto ISO so that the camera can take over and just make sure that you get that smooth transition between your intervals. So that is everything in the time-lapse movie menu option. Um, on the D850, it's much the same. And actually the interval timer menu, which I talked about at the beginning of the stream, has very similar settings towards the end. The exposure smoothing and the silent photography and the interval priority stuff, that can all be translated over to the interval timer shooting menu option if you didn't want the camera to put together uh, the video for you at the end. Got my back, Mr. Hookshanks, thank you. <laughs> Just, yeah, Pal and the other one that I couldn't remember the name of. I've got it all written down somewhere at work because, uh, because people ask me this quite often. Right, so time-lapse movie. I am now going to show you some of my experiments. Um, I'm going to break them down a little bit because um, I did plonk them together in a very uh, kind of slapdash movie style thing just so that you could see them all in one go. Um, but I did want to show them to you individually as well. So I'm going to do that quickly. I'm just going to switch my screen over. Here we go. Uh, here is my desktop, <laughs> as you can see. So just to give you an example of, I'm going to find the first one. This is some shutter speed banding in an example and also not using interval priority. So if you have a look at that video, you've got shutter speed banding and then right at the end, you see it gets a bit jerky. I'm going to show you again. It gets a bit jerky towards the end because the camera is trying to adjust for the change in light. So the camera is adjusting for the change in light and therefore I got less intervals, which meant essentially the, the interval wasn't as smooth in transition. Um, so that is an example of how not to do it. That is plonked into um, my overall video there somewhere. Now, when I had slightly better light, I think this is a slightly short one, but you can see how smooth that video is. So 
it just very smoothly. This was once every two seconds and it just put that video together for me of the dandelions moving. These were before, unfortunately, they all closed up. I did do a few failing experiments with those, but that just shows you an example there. The other important thing to remember as you're doing this is the change in light can be quite uh, quite noticeable when you're doing time-lapse video. So here, unfortunately, there was a hair there somewhere, but we'll ignore that. So this was the change in light of an afternoon, and it's very, very noticeable if you watch it a few times. The light changed so dramatically in the space of the three, I was doing the, the shots every five seconds. So in the space of five seconds, towards the end there, the sunlight changed so dramatically that you ended up with this kind of weird jerky um, transition right at the end. So that was a little bit strange. And also is worth noting because if you, if you see how I do it wrong, you can not do it like me. <laughs> you can um, see what it's like. I think that one is, is that a long one? This was another example of just the light changing quite dramatically. Again, at the end, the light changed so much. This was the day before yesterday and you'd end up with this unsmooth transition. So I would have been better off doing a shot every one second in that instance. Um, now I'm just gonna show you, this is, let me just make sure I give you the right one here. I believe, is it this one? No, I don't think it is this one. This is, yes, this is the movement of some dandelions. Again, once every three seconds, let me show you the other one. There we go. So this little tulip, unfortunately, hadn't reached the water. So I adjusted it and I put the, the tulip in the water. And then that, every two seconds, this is my computer going jerky now. Um, just the process, just trying to keep up with the amount of stuff that it's supposed to be doing. But essentially, it was actually a very smooth transition in that video. And the, and the tulip rising back up. That was over the space of about 20, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour every few seconds so that gives you an idea of what that looks like a very rewarding one if you do have any clouds um is cloud movement um my pro <laughs> the processor of my computer is screaming at me right now for um asking it to do so many things at once and playing all these videos but essentially you get the movement of clouds um, it's very, very rewarding to look at. If there were more people about, you could get the movement of cars and things like that as well. Um, a brilliant example of this was actually, um, let me show you, do, 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 here we go. So a brilliant example of this is actually our good friend Eves, um, and he did a daisy in time-lapse, and it was very smooth. Look at that, it's fantastic. So Eves, I hope you don't mind me giving you my, your <laughs> giving yours as an example um, but it is actually a wonderful example of a daisy opening up I have surprisingly few daisies in my garden I don't have any uh, mostly just dandelions but um, but this was a beautiful example of a time lapse and you could see the little insects moving around in the distance and everything it was a nice smooth transition um, I think Eve's mentioned somewhere there we go three seconds over 20 minutes smoothing and silent on 1080, 60p, interval priority off, there we go. So all of the settings that um, that were pretty much right for that. Um, obviously for Instagram, it's gonna downsize it anyway, so you won't necessarily see that it's 1080p, unfortunately. Um, and also if you did wanna slow down this video in post-processing, having more frames, so shooting 50 or 60p is actually quite a good idea. Um, so that gives you an idea. I'm seeing little things falling into the pot. This is very exciting, but I don't know why, because I can't see the comments. Let me switch over. Um, yeah, thank you, Eves, for that. That was that was actually brilliant. Um, so that was a really, really good example. I have shoved together my time-lapse efforts into a single video, which I will try and show you if my computer will um, bear with me and be kind and work. So <laughs> because I'm streaming and it's, it's trying to deal with quite a lot and it's about... 10 years old this computer um it does it does get a little bit we all have technical difficulties right <laughs> it's not just me i'm sure um so i'm going to show you the um the whole video all in one go firmware upgrade david says in case you've not heard there's been a firmware upgrade 
of the 2470F4 for the Z system. This is fantastic. Um, I'm going to talk about some firmware updates because someone asked me over the phone yes, today, this morning in fact, um, how to do firmware updates for your speed light. Um, and I thought perhaps that would be quite a useful thing to cover. So if you need me to cover more in-depth firmware updates, then you know, let me know and I will absolutely do that. Um, thank you, Nick. <laughs> Just happened to glance over and then the pot filled up with a few more little, little bubbles. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay, brilliant. I'm gonna find this video so that I can show you now. I had it all ready to go and uh, then I lost it. So here we go. It's only because um, my computer is in the process of, here we go. So here is my time-lapse project. Let me switch to screen grab again so that you can see it. As I say, I literally just whacked this together in iMovie. So it's, um, it's not, well, you'll see. <laughs> And there you have it. <laughs> so that was something that I threw together. As you can see, some of the jerkiness there was actually partially from my computer being very uncooperative. Um, but I will pop that little video in the drive. It's quite literally a matter of taking all of those clips, sticking them into something like Final Cut Pro or um, the Mac Movie Maker. I think Windows have something similar. And um, finding a track that was long enough to fit on there that sounded very serene. So um, that's the kind of thing that you can do with this. You can have a, a tremendous amount of fun playing with different um, settings and different scenes. If I was on a busy street in London, it would look fantastic. Not much of that is going on at the moment. We've got a um, very kind of calm, low body traffic area here in West Sussex. So it's not exactly like there were lots of people walking around, but it is very, very interesting um, to see how it looks when you put it all together and it is quite rewarding. The Yes, the moon part of it was, was actually really fun because um, although the first little video was only done over the period of 10 minutes, I didn't realize how much the moon was gonna move in that short period of time. So then I got a different lens and a different setup and that, that moon transition was over a period of about half an hour that I recorded it. So you can do some similar things like that and I hope that you have a lot of fun doing that. Um, <laughs> so, now, lens firmware update, I'm gonna switch tack here because I've pretty much covered everything um, on the time-lapse movie um, thing. I just, uh, before I forget, so if you need an AC adapter, I will not forget, if you need an AC adapter for your Z camera or for your D850 or any camera that takes an ENEL 15, um, it is a part called the EH5B and you need a dummy battery that goes into the battery chamber slot. So that makes it last um, even longer. It will obviously just, it connects to the main so you can have the camera on pretty much permanently if you want to. Um, if you were to uh, have a smaller camera, like a D3500 or a 5000 series, it's still the EH5B, but the thing that goes, the dummy battery is obviously different because the batteries are a different shape. So basically, the camera itself, you put a dummy battery in here. If you've ever wondered why in fact, I'll show you. If you've ever wondered why there is this little flap here that comes out on these cameras, 
there's a little flap always by the battery chamber cover. If you wonder why that's there, it's so that you can plug in a dummy battery because the dummy battery then has a little wire that comes out of this and it goes into the EH5B. Um, so if that's what you, you need because you want to do longer time lapses, um, you can obviously get those on the GOW website. But in the meantime, if you can't get hold of one of those and a single charge of one of these, if it's a if it's an ENL 15B certainly or a 15A, seems to last a couple of hours. Um, less so if you're recording all in one big chunk, but a little bit longer if you're recording several different videos. So uh, that's on the AC adapter front. Uh, I will get the links for those also put onto the stream just below the video so that if you need those afterwards, you can get hold of them. Um, everyone's asking about firmware updates. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help you out here. Um, if you wanna update your firmware, you need to go to the Nikon website. And I've gone through this a few times, but I will just switch over my screen so that you can see it. Uh, let's, here we go. Uh, oh, I decided to take me to this one instead. Let's not go to in, image support. So you go nikon.co.uk in our case, takes you straight to the Nikon website, and then you wanna go service and support, download center. In the download center, you wanna find the product that you want to update. So if you want to update the 24 to 70 Z, it's gonna be in here. But a firmware update, and then you will download it. You will have to follow the instructions on the download page. Um, if you have any questions on how to do that, I did a video on updating Z firmware specifically, but it does generally apply to most other cameras. Um, but just read the instructions and you'll, you'll be able to find your way through it. You can also update the firmware for your, if you're, for example, unsure about your Z camera and what firmware you should be on, here is the Z6 as an example. The firmware is version 3.0, so David, your firmware is nice and up to date already. Um, if you've got a flash, and this is some, something someone asked me about before, you can also update the firmware for certain speed lights through the Nikon website as well. So that is all there for you. That, that resource is um, yours to take advantage of. You can also download the instruction manuals. You can do all kinds of things. Now, um, la 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 la. Please explain firmware update process. Uh, it's essentially the same as a camera update, but as Nick says, it's two separate things. You just have to have the lens in question attached to the body that you are doing the firmware update on. Um, if you get stuck, there is a video on the Grays of Westminster YouTube site which says how to update the firmware on your Z. This, the principle is the same. The instructions are pretty much identical. Um, so if you do get really, really stuck, I did a sort of step-by-step -step there to help anyone that was um, running into difficulty with it. You'd be amazed at how difficult it is actually to follow those Nikon instructions. It's like they were written in um, a different <laughs> language and translated to English, which is possibly what happened. Um, my email address is indeed becky at grayswestminster.co.uk. So if you need to send me an email or you have any questions on the stuff that I'm talking about, you can do that. I will be um, not looking at emails now for a few more days. It's gonna be Tuesday now before I'm back on this kind of virtual shop floor, if you like, and we're gonna do our competition and everything then. So um, if you wanna send me emails, you're welcome to, I just won't see them straight away. Um, now, just very lastly, I do wanna make sure that everyone is commenting on the pictures in the drive folder. So I am going to just show you once again <laughs> <laughs> You're all sick of me talking about this now. This is our competition um, folder for the film competition. And I would love everybody to go through these and leave a comment. So if you want to go through a picture, if you want to vote for it as the winning film picture for, um, for our beginning of the month competition, um, then all you have to do is click on the image you want to vote for. Obviously, you can go through the images as you like. Um, and then to comment on it, you just click on that little box and then you highlight a portion and then you leave a comment. Simple as that. If you vote for that picture, that's all you need to do. Um, whether you say, nice light, I'm voting for this one, or what film did you use? This is beautiful, I'm voting for this one. <laughs> Just make it very clear to me that you wanna vote for a picture um, and then go through them all one by one 
and um, and pick and choose whichever one you think deserves to be a winner. Um, that is pretty much everything that I wanted to cover today. I'm gonna, before I disappear from the screen, I am gonna check your comments to make sure that I've covered everything that you've been asking for. Oh yes, somebody asked me about software. Um, software for the movie. So you can use, so Photoshop, as Steve says, Photoshop will create a GIF for you if you wanna do that. That's quite short. Um, if you've got a Mac, then you can just use iMovie. That is, or movies. I think it might have been combined into one thing now, but my computer's quite old. So, but iMovie was a free Apple software. I'm pretty sure it still exists. Um, that is very simple. You just drag the clips in, lay them out, set some transitions between the clips, plop some music on. There's loads of clips in there. The one that I used was just one of the free clips um, that happened to be long enough to cover my video. Uh, if you've got, obviously, Adobe software, you can use Final Cut Pro. Um, you can use, there's so many different um, editing software out there, but even um, my husband who uses a PC, that's <laughs> unbelievably. His Windows 10 PC comes with free video editing software and he can just pick and choose and put things together and it was completely free, so you can do that. Um, yes, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell to receive notifications. As I say, my next stream is gonna be on Tuesday now, so you've got a few days without me. Um, but uh, if you do wanna receive notifications as to when we are streaming, that is the best way to do it. If something changes or I do a bonus stream or we upload a video or anything like that, the way to know is to subscribe and click the little bell. Um, I think that we pretty much filled the, the little ice cream Thing. almost we almost did that was pretty good thank you very very much to everyone who contributed to the um, ice cream coffee fund ice cream is much more appropriate in this weather anyway <laughs> so so thank you for that that's absolutely brilliant um, as always leave your comments if you have any other questions or you want me to cover topics I have a huge list of topics to still cover so don't worry I'm not running out of material yet um, <laughs> I've got a couple of PC lenses which are waiting for me downstairs which I need to take some shots with. Um, we're going to talk about pushing and pulling film. We're going to talk about natural light portraiture, understanding histograms. Um, I'm going to take you through the retouching menu, um, also different autofocus modes and back button focus. Firmware updates, I can do more in depth if you really want a step-by-step -step instruction on it. Um, metering, RAW versus JPEG, you name it, I've got it covered. But if you have any suggestions for me, please, please do send them over. I am always happy to receive them. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter weekend, whatever you may be doing. If you are allowed to self-isolate outside in a garden or on a balcony <laughs> somewhere where there are no other people, um, please do that. And um, and I will try not to eat too many Easter eggs, Terry. It may be a challenge. If I, <laughs> if I fill the screen a little bit more on Tuesday, you'll know what happened there. Um, peaking with manual lenses. I did a video on that, actually. But yes, it's a great... It's a great thing to have. Um, all right, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next week.